First of all, it's sobering to learn that you weren't born during the Cold War. I certainly was. And I recall vividly, it's one of my earliest memories, being a child who lived not 20 miles, probably not 10, from a Royal Air Force base called Lukers in Fife, uh, lying in bed, hearing an aeroplane, as I often did, from Lukers, and wondering if it was the aeroplane carrying the nuclear bomb that was going to end the world during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Though I was a small child uh, of six years old, I had absorbed the anxiety, fear of my parents uh, who endlessly were discussing it and international events in general. And I went to bed fearful and woke up to the sound of this Royal Air Force plane. I remember it vividly. It may be one of the very earliest memories I have. And I lived through many crises, including the lunatic period of Ronald Reagan's presidency when he began to deploy cruise missiles and Pershing missiles in Europe, placing the Europeans in the front line of an ideological Cold War between the US and the then Soviet Union. I was one of those who moved in Parliament and out of Parliament uh, many, many large numbers of people on the demonstrations against these uh, hideous weapons and this phenomenal escalation represented by this deployment. I walked with the late and great Monsignor Bruce Kent, God rest his soul, uh, from uh, Faz Lane in Scotland where they keep the nuclear weapons and where I myself was uh, arrested and thrown into jail once. Uh, and I walked and spoke every night on that walk with Monsignor Bruce Kent, the leader of CND, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament at that time, all the way to Bergfield, the US military base there. It was an epic walk, it was an epic campaign, but we were dealing with momentous issues. And we did so with a bedrock of a mass conscientized group of people in the country that were absolutely dedicated to the fight against the danger of nuclear war. All of that is gone 